My ex stole from me close to 90k euros which I saved up for 9 years, and when I took her to court, I lost due to lack of evidence. At the moment I felt destroyed, and lost it all. She even sued me for emotional damages, and I had to pay 55k euros. So I was forced to sell my house, and take a big loan from the bank. I stayed at a friend, and helped me find some good lawyers. And we just found an amazing one. In one day he helped me so much, and even helped me get the info, of who took money from my bank account. Something was wrong. 29th of June a transaction happened in my name. I never made it, I was not in the country at the time. Well would you look at that. I was ready to get back into court, when I found out, that she bought my house. Well, I have a safe, that I never told her about hidden in the bathroom behind the cabinet. Well she ruined my life, why not ruin her even more? So I had an accomplice, that helped me buy some drugs, worth about 400 euros, and used a friend to hide it there. The safe has a 4 digit code, that being 0000, never got to change it to something else. And before taking her to court again I had that same friend who hid the drugs turn her in. It took about a week for the cops, to receive a mandate to search the house. They found nothing in the first 2 hours, and they wouldn't, if my friend forgot to leave the safe cover open. That 400 euros worth of drugs are equal to a 5k euro fine and 12 years of prison. Well I'm not done yet. Court time again. I had my lawyer get the footage from when the money from the bank was transferred, and also I had a document showing that I was not in the country at the time. We also found out the account to which the money was sent to. The name was that of my ex. Well, look how the tables have just turned. My lawyer also demanded payment for emotional damage, all the money that was stolen, the house and also money equivalent to 2 times the debt I had in the bank which is equal to about 140k euros. The look on her face, when everything came down crashing on her was totally worth it. And on top of the 12 years from drug possession she received an additional 25 years for theft and false testimony. Enjoy it, bitch. I'll start off by saying this happened to my sister, and the actions taken were hers. My sister has always gotten along very well with her teachers, and has a habit of forming actual friendships with them, to the point that she still talks to her 5th grade English teacher, along with many others, decades later. This happened about 15 years ago. My sister was a student at Job Corps, a government-run live-on campus vocational training program, studying hotel-slash-motel management. She got on extremely well with her hotel slash motel management teacher, better than pretty much every teacher she'd already had up to that point. One day, the teacher goes to the center's dean's office, and walks in on a paper shredding session. It turned out that there was some pretty major embezzling happening at the center, as in more than 60% of the funds for the center were being stolen. The teacher was appalled, and despite some rather lucrative offers made, refused to join in on these acts. Less than a week later, the teacher was fired for trumped up reasons. This was especially bad given the teacher was only 2 years away from retiring, and being fired, lost their retirement package. Needless to say, my sister was pissed. Knowing how things typically work, and that almost any report she tried to make, would just be swept under the rug, if it was taken seriously at all, she came up with a plan, and took things nuclear. Over the next month or two, my sister managed to gather some basic evidence of the embezzling, nothing concrete, but enough to warrant considerable investigation by the authorities. She took the little evidence she was able to gather, along with the story of what happened to her teacher, and sent the info in an email to the job core regional director. Now like I said, she knew that her email would likely be ignored, or the events wept under the rug, so she got smart. The email was cc'd to every single major person in the job core chain of command, all the way up to the national director, as well as to anyone even tangentially related to job core in the upper echelons of the Department of Labor, and every member of Congress, as well as the US President's office. Remember, this was a government-run program. All in all, the email was sent to over 2,000 people. Basically, she not only sent the report, but sent it in such a way that everyone who got it could also see everyone else who got it, and she sent it to WAAAY more people than would be needed to ensure the issue couldn't be swept under the rug. 
Two weeks later, after the investigation finished, never seen the government work so fast on anything that wasn't collecting owed taxes. Only five or six staff members, out of 20 ish that worked in the center, still had their jobs. And at least five of the ones fired, including the dean, were facing major criminal charges. With the rest facing minor charges. I'm not sure of the exact figure on how much was stolen, but it was well into the 7 digits, the embezzling had been happening for years. The teacher got a very nice severance package post investigation, I like, it was 3 year of pay, her full retirement package, and signing her NDA, though she didn't get her job back, and my sister was given her completion certificate, despite not having finished the requirements of the course, they wanted her gone, but couldn't kick her out. I was in the hospital for two days suffering from a head injury and my girlfriend was stressed out for several things in her own life. She smoked for the first time and had sex with her friend that supplied her. I saw a text coming from him talking about what happened. She left out of country on vacation a few days after that, so I made my plan. While she was away from home, I walked into her house and went to her bathroom. I emptied her contact lenses solution and replaced it with her tap water. The water has microbes in it that cause eye infections. Fast forward a few weeks later I was talking to a mutual friend and I learned that her vision is severely impaired and she had to spend thousands of dollars to make her vision less impaired. Been really wanting to post to this, but unfortunately I myself have never exacted revenge, at least nothing worth posting. But this, I think this may be worth sharing. Warning contains a story about a holocaust survivor. This happened to my dad's great grand uncle, I will just call him uncle, nuclear revenge doesn't want acronyms. I never knew him, he died in 1998, when I was about 5, my dad didn't know him very well either, he was kinda reclusive. Uncle was a holocaust survivor, but he never really talked about it, he never gave a testimony, never collected reparations, never went back to his homeland, Ukraine. Never sought out if his friends or family survived. He just moved to the US, met up with the family he had there, and started over, got married, had kids, all the while never saying much other than I was there. The only reason we know any details about this is because one night one of his sons got him drunk and he spilled the whole terrible story. Later the son found out that the mother knew a fair amount too. She had fled her native land, I think it was Czechoslovakia, just as it was being invaded, so she understood to an extent. But after that he refused to say anything more. The son has been spending the past few years trying to find out more from records and such. I don't know too many details unfortunately. I only met the son once. Can't remember his name at all. Uncle was at a concentration camp. We're not sure which. But I think the son said it was Dachau. But don't quote me on that. He was in his late 20s, not more than a day, after he got off the train an officer pulled him aside from the working line and began berating him about being lazy. He then said he needed to be made an example of so the others rolled and slack off. He took out a cutlass and chopped off uncle's left hand. The officer told him to get back to work and walked away laughing while uncle bled out in the snow. The others tried to nurse him and keep him as healthy as he could, but his wounds still got infected, and he was sick and slow a lot. Luckily, the others picked up his work, and helped him as much as they could. Apparently uncle had said, that he had made peace with the fact, that he was going to die there, and be fed to the dogs. The officer continued to harass uncle, he looked for any excuse, to beat and demean him, it's a wonder he didn't just shoot him. He took away his food, his shoes, had dogs attack him, made him do tasks that required two hands etc. When the camp was liberated uncle went up to a soldier and asked if they had captured any officers. He said they did, he asked if they caught the officer that had tormented him, which he said while he showed the soldier his stump wrapped in soiled bandages. The soldier brought the officer to him handcuffed and had him on his knees. Uncle then, with soldiers around him, proceeded to choke the life out of the officer with his remaining hand. Evidently it took quite a while, and apparently one of the soldiers offered uncle their gun, but he stuck with slowly but surely choking the life out of the man that took his hand and tormented him and countless others. Afterwards uncle got a wooden hand, moved to America, got married, had kids, 
All the while, whenever someone saw his tattoo, or asked him about the war or the camps, he just show them his wooden hand, and say I was there, I don't want to go back. I can't imagine the kind of PTSD he must have had from that experience, I can't imagine the pain and trauma it caused him. I doubt he ever got any real help either, it seems that he just took it all to the grave, but things like that shouldn't be forgotten, no matter how painful, they should be remembered, so we as people never allow something like that to happen again. I hope he was at least at peace with himself, and at least enjoyed the life he made after that ordeal. Backstory this was over 50 years ago, and I'm sure no one involved is still alive. I was told about this by my father during a hunting trip, when my father was a little drunk one night. On to the story. As said before this happened over 50 years ago. My father and his brother my uncle and a few of their biker slash truck driver friends were in a bar drinking. While enjoying the drinks and music a small bar fight broke out between two guys a couple tables away. My uncle has always been a nice guy, and would never raise a hand in anger, and go out of his way to help others. He gets up walks over, and separating the two guys, and tells them to just knock it off, and enjoy their beer. My uncle stands above 68, and was as strong as he was tall. The two guys sat down, and one just gave my uncle a dirty look. My uncle rejoined my father and his friends, and went back to enjoying their drinking. The guy with the dirty look got up and left the bar. My uncle was sitting with his back to the door when the guy came back in and walked right behind my uncle before anybody could act pulled a gun and shot my uncle in the back. The guy turned and ran back out of the bar, got into his truck and drove off. One of my father's friends grabbed the other guy and took him outside and got the information about his friend and told him to leave town and never come back if he knew what was good for him. They took my uncle to the hospital as it would be faster than waiting for a ambulance back then. The next day after a long surgery my uncle was going to survive, but the bullet severed his spine and he would never walk again. Once they knew he was going to live my father, and about 5 of the friends took the info they got, and tracked down the shooter busted down his door in the middle of the night took him, and his gun someplace my father would not say. At this place far enough away no one would ever hear what was happening. They beat him for hours until his arms and legs were pretty much mush and my father said the man just disappeared that night. The police asked about what happened to my uncle, but was told it happened so fast nobody saw a thing. The bartender was a friend, and said the same. I lost my father over 33 years ago to cancer and my uncle well he lived for a good life until complications to his legs, and they had to be removed he passed on about 20 years ago. I feel safe on writing this as there is no body left alive connected to that night. God bless my father and his friends not allowing a coward such as this to walk away without a bunch of karma getting him. I miss you dad and uncle Jay. If you enjoyed the stories, slap the like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.